Commissioner. The next witness in this case study is Mr Sean Bassett. Yes, it's Mr Bassett. I'm in the hearing room. Perhaps we could send it on the staff members. Is your witness, inquire. Ms Harris? Uh, he's, he's, he's not, um, Commissioner. Mr Lippert is here on behalf of Mr Bassett. Yes. yes. Uh, well, Mr Bassett was uh, asked to remain out of the room during this. Yes, well, can someone arrange to get him? Mr Bassett, just before you sit down, can I ask whether you would prefer to uh, make an oath or take an affirmation? I'm happy to do the oath. Swear the witness, please. I swear by Almighty God. I swear by Almighty God. That the evidence I shall give. That the evidence I shall give. Will be the truth. Will be the truth. The whole truth. The whole truth. And nothing but the truth. And nothing but the truth. Thank you very much, Mr Bassett. Please sit down. Thank you. Yes, Ms. Beers. Thank you, Commissioner. Your name is Sean Bassett? Yes. And you have provided your address to the Commission? Yes. Mr Bassett, you have sworn a statutory declaration dated 18 May 2018, which you have provided to the Commission in relation to this case study? Yes. I uh, tender the statutory declaration, Commissioner. It will be Exhibit 3.137, statutory declaration of Mr Bassett. Mr Bassett, you worked at the NAB from September 2014 to August... Is Mr Bassett here uh, on a summons? Oh, I, actually, that is true. Do you have your summons there, Mr Bassett? Yes. Yes. We'll tender the summons as well, Commissioner. Thank you for that. Thank you. Exhibit 3.138 will be the summons to Mr Bassett. As I say, it's to make quite plain that he's here under compulsion and therefore entitled to the uh, protections of the Act, not just mindless form and solemnity. Yes. Quiet. <laughs> Mr Bassett, you worked at the NAB from September 2014 to August 2016, is that correct? Yes. And before that you'd worked over 13 years in business banking? Yes. Uh, ANZ and Macquarie Banks? Yes. And in February 2015 you were the senior business banking manager at the NAB? Yes. And at that time you took over the relationship the Na of the National Music Facilities file? Yes. And when you took over the file, you would have familiarised yourself with the file? Yes. And in your declaration, your statutory declaration, you say you're a very experienced and capable banker? Yes. You arranged to meet with Mr Dillon, one of the directors of National Music, uh, in early March 2015? Yes. Now, you say you can't recall the date or the precise details of that conversation? Yes. But you do recall that part of the conversation related to the potential sale of Goanna Downs? Yes. That was Mr Dillon's home? Yes. Were you present for Mr Dillon's evidence, Mr Bassett? No. But you're aware that he says that he recalls he discussed with you that he would use the surplus proceeds from the sale of his home to inject 200 to 300 k or 1,000 in capital or cash into the company and use the proceeds to buy a small home in Melbourne? Yes, I'm aware of his evidence. Uh, now, you don't deny and you can't deny, Mr Bassett, that Mr Dillon told you these things because you can't recall the conversation? Yes. You're agreeing with that proposition? I'm agreeing with I can't recall the exact details, so I can't say that he did not unequivocally. Thank you. Now, Mr Dillon has also told the Commission that Goanna Downs went to auction on 22 April but did not sell at the auction. Do you recall that? Yes, because I've seen that in the statement. Thank you. 
and it was around 27 April that you referred National Music Facilities to the Strategic Business Services or SBS division of the NAB? Yes. And the referral was due to National Music informing you that there would, there would be a shortfall coming up in about the middle of 2015 and they needed to get an uplift in the facilities? Yes. And then the evidence is also that going down sold after the auction and Mr Dillon solicitor emailed you to let you know about that. Yes. You received the contract and you forwarded it to the new SBS manager or the impaired assets manager assigned to the file. That was Margaret Moynihan. Yes. Now, uh, Ms Moynihan sent you an email uh, in response to your email and that is at nab.134.007.9166. This is on the same day that you received that contract, Mr Bass. We'll just bring that up. and you, You've got a screen there. It should be shown to you. Thank you. We might put the two pages side by side. 9166 and 9177. Mr Bassett, have you seen this email recently? Yes. Were you provided a copy of this by the legal team for the NAB? Yes. Now at 9166, we see uh, Ms Bassett's email to you in response to you sending the contract. Ms Moynihan. Ms Moynihan, sorry, yes. And, you, and she says, we're currently funding cash flow through trade finance and invoice finance facilities with majority of lending CAT E and have a further application for 200,000 to assist with cash flow. We should pay down our facilities from the sale of Goanna Downs and therefore will require all net funds to NAB. The reduction in debt should provide an ideal opportunity for the business to restructure and I under recommend undertaking the business review. And then we see further down that paragraph, our primary exit following the settlement of the property will be inventory and debtor collections. And you respond in response to her email, thank you Margaret. How would you like below communicated to client? Further, do we have an outcome on the short-term funding requests? Or is this contingent on your review of figures below? Ross is located interstate, so it is likely a phone call is required to ensure not too much time is lost in communicating below. Now, this email exchange makes it clear, does it not, Mr Bassett, that neither you nor anyone else at the NAB had communicated this to Mr Dillon before? Yes. Now, after that, you received an email from Mr Ross Dillon in which he saw that you had asked for the discharge authority and he saw this and was suspicious. Is that correct? Yes. You forwarded that email to Margaret Moynihan. Is that correct? Yes. I want to take that to you. That is Exhibit 108 to Mr McNaughton's statement. That is NAB 134-0079183. We might just put the first two pages up, 9183 and 9184, thank you. Thank you. So the first email we've just referred to, that is Mr Dillon's email to you saying, he is very suspicious of the NAB, its motives. And then you forwarded that to Margaret on 30th of April at 6.18pm. Hello, Margaret, refer below. I will not respond to the email below until you direct me. However, given nature of email, it is clear we will have to respond shortly to Ross so that they are clear what we are proposing. Regards, Sean. Margaret has written back to you. It would be good to understand what arrangements were discussed with the customer regarding the sale of the property. What expectations were communicated to the customer regarding the utilisation of the proceeds of sale? Were the customers aware of the facilities secured against the property? 
If you can provide the background of your conversations with the customer, it may make it easier to understand his comments. Now, were you shown this recently, Mr? Yes. That's it. Thank you. Now, you responded to that in an email the next day, which is Exhibit 109 to Mr McNaughton's statement. That's NAB 134.007.9186. Thank you. Do you respond? This is the next day, Mr Bassett. Hello, Margaret. I certainly have never communicated what banks' expectations would be upon sale of Goanna Downs. Ross has told us before that upon sale of the property, he intended to, on putting 200,000 in funds into national music. But at that time, we did not talk about debt reduction. Not at any stage have I discussed what the bank will require as debt reduction and what facilities the property secures. The property was on the market before I actually met or had my first discussion with Ross. I do not know what conversations were had prior to my looking after this connection, and I was only handed the relationship, relationship in February of this year. Hopefully this helps. Now, I want to put to you that you didn't communicate what the bank's expectations would be because you had no idea yourself, Mr Bassett, is that correct? Yes, because it's not, not within my discretion to determine what the proceeds, or how the proceeds will ultimately be dealt with and debt reduction is. Yes, you refer to that in your statutory declaration as well, mm. Mr Bassett. You say you wouldn't have given Mr Dillon assurances about use of the funds as he claims, or as you say he Correct. claims, because you're an experienced banker and you would not have indicated any approval of any sort without credit approval by an accredited executive. That's Correct. correct? Now, you had a telephone discussion with Mr Dillon on the 1st of May. Do you recall that discussion? No. Mr Dillon has given evidence that he reacted to your telephone discussion it, with anger, but you're saying you don't recall that? No. I want to show you another email. This is an email from Ms Moynihan to you, dated 4th of May. And the doc ID is NAB 141.001.5774. Thank you. So at this time, do you remember there had been a meeting and Margaret Moynihan had said the facility limits had to be decreased for the National Music Trade Facilities and other facilities. Yes. Now, this is a draft of an email which Ms Moynihan sent to you, which was ultimately finalised and sent to National Music the next day. Have you seen this before? Yes. Has it been provided to you by the NAG legal team recently? Yes. Now, Ms Moynihan has inserted some comments in red further below on this page. And there are other comments on the next page we'll, which we'll come to actually if we could have both pages put up that would be helpful. Uh, thank you. So the first comment is under the heading key metrics, it's in red. If we look at the repayment table below, then the calculation is existing facilities, and there's a figure there, plus shortfall on facilities from sale of property. NAB security is debtors plus inventory. I don't know what percentage we would apply to this number as being a realistic recovery. And then on the next page, Ms Moynihan says to you, Sean, my initial thoughts were to advance the 100K, and I interposed there, that is what was being requested, except that it was the figure of a 200 that was being requested. Is that correct? Yes, yes. I understand that, yes. Yes. Based on their cash flow forecast, and deliver the news that all funds from the sale will come to NAB. However, if my numbers are right, and if you wouldn't mind sense checking them, then we don't have sufficient security for the facilities required and should consider advising the customer of reducing limits. Can you please read the above, sense check it, and make any amendments in red and any suggestions you have? Thanks very much. 
we should be able to send this off to them tomorrow a.m. Now again, this confirms that this was all news to you, Mr Bassett. Yes. Now you respond to this in an email that's at NAB 141-001-5878. Hi Margaret, all of the below makes sense. Your numbers look correct, so yes, rationale to have limits reduced is reasonable. However, we probably have to balance this with them being able to continue to trade, utilising work, working capital facilities. I would support advancing the 100K insistence through to September regards, Sean. Now, is it fair to say that you realise that the business needed the trade facilities and you're trying to make sure with this email that the limits are going to be reduced in a way that allows the company to continue to trade? Yes. So I just want to recap on your evidence, Mr Bassett. It's correct to say that you did not tell Mr Dillon that the NAB would take all or nearly all of the proceeds from the sale at Goanna Downs because you didn't know of that plan before Ms Moynihan informed you of it? Yes. However, I was aware that the bank had had discussions previously that proceeds would come from sale of the property for both business and... But you didn't know how much, all the but amounts? I did not know how much, no, correct. And it's also correct to, to say that you didn't tell Mr Dillon what would happen to the facilities after the sale, the National Music Facilities? Correct. Thank you. No further questions, Commissioner. Yes. Ms Harris. Uh, uh, Mr um, Bassett, just one question. Can we bring up NAB 005-376-1199? Do you see this is a close monitoring action plan dated the 19th of March 2015? Uh, on the national music <coughs> file. Can you just take a moment to uh, read it, in particular what appears under, um, from, from comments, details to the end? What is that document? Um, that's a close monitoring action plan. So um, something that uh, as a frontline banker, we, I would put together um, to perhaps recommend or recommend a close monitoring plan with a client. And uh, in the first line under comments, details, there's a reference to SBBM has subsequently met with the client, etc. Who's SBBM? Uh, that, that's myself, Senior Business Bank Manager. Thank you. Yeah. And under the heading additional... Yes. Um, can you uh, see a couple of lines in? There's a sentence that starts, SBBM has met with Ross. Yes. Can you read from there to the bottom of the paragraph, please? SBBM has Oh, met no, you don't. Just to yourself. Oh, sorry. <laughs> I beg your pardon. 
You probably wrote it yourself. Yes. Where did you obtain that information from? Um, I imagine that was in a conversation with the client at some point in time. Thank you. No questions. Yes. Right. No, thank you, Ms Diaz. No further questions. Yes, Mr. thank Bassett you very much, Mr Bassett. You may step down and you're excused. Yes. Commissioner, is that a convenient time to take a 15-minute break and then the next witness will be Mr Moyne? Uh, how no. long? How are we travelling for time? Oh, 15 Mr McNaughton, I'm sorry. Sorry. 15 minutes is more than I think... Uh, I'll be content with... You're going to have five, Mr Hodge. I'll be back at uh, 11.30. I'm very worried about our time today. Yes, thank you.